with all the modern devices these days that plug into a uh, 12 volt outlet or a cigarette lighter plug, how was a person supposed to do it with an older car when you only got one plug? I mean, how am I supposed to spotlight somebody, charge my cell phone, and run like a, uh, a windshield defroster all at the same time and a dash camera? Well, there's really only one way, and that's to add more plugs. So I'm gonna show you how to add more 12 volt outlet, outlet plugs so we can run everything, spotlighting, talking on the cell phone, frosting the windshield. We can do everything at once without the headache. All jokes aside, this is a uh, typical 90s car or anything older than that, you know, even early 2000s all the way back through the beginning of the cigarette lighter plug. Generally they have one and this vehicle has one and it's been a nightmare for years. Um, got one of these little dongle things that splits one into two and that works but it also uh, an older car takes away one of my cup holders so we're gonna add an additional outlet because lately I've been running I run a dash cam for the last year or so so dash cam plus charging your cell phone just doesn't happen um, I'm gonna remove the stereo just so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better I'm gonna show you the different things to look for and how easy this really is yeah, I'm gonna pull out this cigarette lighter just so you guys can see um, this is a typical uh, Ford cigarette lighter, and this is in a lot of vehicles, this style. Um, what it's done is all they do is have a hole in the dash, and there's a retaining nut behind it, which is also the ground for it, that actually slips over and screws on, and then the whole thing comes out. But what we're going to do is we're just going to access that. And there's just two wires that go to it. One's positive, one's negative. On this vehicle, this is a um, an outlet that only comes on when the vehicle's on, so there's no power going to here. If this was one... That had power all the time you should actually pull the fuse for it or disconnect the battery but just pull the fuse for it if you know which one it is it'll say sig lighter or auxiliary but pull the fuse for it and then it won't have power to it because otherwise it might be sparking but it probably still won't because this is a shielded the positive is usually shielded and the ground isn't now now this is something you can just pick up at walmart or virtually any automotive store that i think this cost me right around under five bucks and this is a double outlet thing and all we're going to do is we don't actually have to add a fuse or anything in line with this all we pretty much got to do is it connect red to positive, black to negative, hook in our original one, and we've got power. That's it. Um, the reason we don't need a fuse is because this line is fused. So there is a fuse in the original vehicle's um, equipment that will fuse this, this circuit. Um, unless you're planning on drawing way more than the circuit could supply, but generally cell phones and other stuff don't even come close to the uh, either 10 or 15 amps. That these are actually fused at so they're able to handle up to 10 or 15 amps looking at your fuse but even 10 amps i mean that's quite a bit i could run pretty much almost everything you can plug into it with cell phones and modern electronics charger ipad everything else and you're not going to come close to actually uh, tripping and blowing the fuse and if you do running a completely different circuit but that's something completely different now you can buy these but i also like to use um these which are just like the ford both of these are also Ford items that you just get from the wrecking yard. A little bit different style here. It has the uh, the negative which touches the outside and the positive is always in the middle. This one right here, positive is in the middle, grounds on the outside. And these are great for adding to different vehicles and stuff because all you have to do is drill a hole with a hole saw, slide this through, has the lip come on the back and screw it in. On this one the wires are really tucked back here and I'm going to actually, because it's kind of a pain in the butt to get back in there. I'm actually going to solder connections to this, which connect to that, that'll connect to the other one, just because this is much easier to get to. I could pull out the harness a little bit more and do that, um, as opposed to using something like these little clips. These little clips that you just clip over the wire, put in your new wire, that usually come with kits, are notorious for failing. We just got a random length of black and um, orangish wire, and I'm going to strip a little bit off. Just a little bit because we're soldering it. And yes, you should solder it. If you want wiring connections to last, you should always solder them. Um, if you don't have a soldering iron, you can get a nice little 10 watt one for about five bucks at Walmart. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder the black just to the casing right here and this one down here. So first we're gonna tin it. So we're gonna take the soldering iron, we're gonna take our vintage solder and Preheat the soldering iron just a little bit and we'll just tin them. That just pretty much means 
we're getting solder on stuff. So I got the end of the wires tinned, so just a little bit of solder on them, and I got my two connections right here tinned. So I'm just going to solder them together, making sure it's not interfering with the original connections, and making sure these are out of the way. This is just your ground. Plenty of space to do that. Matter of holding it still where I want it. There we go. That's a permanent connection. Now this one right here, I went extra short on how I stripped the wire, but let's make sure that that doesn't ever contact this side over here, but we're also able to actually connect our original connection back on. And they gave us plenty of room right there. There we go. Both of these are completely out of the way. They don't need to be taped up or anything because these are that's exactly how it sits in the vehicle. They're bare connections, but nice and connected, nice and firm. So I can reconnect my original wires back to this, put this all back together, run my wires to wherever I want to put this outlet, and then splice and connect these and solder these up nicely. You could put connections if you wanted to, but that'll work for me forever. So that's all put back together, and we just got our wires just sticking out over here. And I, they're way longer than they need to be, but we'll just mount this wherever we want. And if this was an old truck or something, you don't have to get the stereo or anything. You can just see right under the old dash, and then you can just mount this below the dash or uh, somewhere else or up hidden under the dash. So you can just know where it's at and plug stuff up underneath. So after a lot of careful deliberation of where I was going to put it, where it wouldn't get kicked too bad, um, didn't really want to put it there because of cup holders. Um, I didn't really want to put it right here because the... Uh, the dash cam is always plugged in, but you kind of want that out of sight, out of mind. So I'm going to mount it upside down and back on this little panel. So it'll be back here, up above your feet. You shouldn't kick it. So I'm never going to take this out and pull it out. I really don't care. If I do, I'll just cut the wires. But you could just crimp on some uh, shielded, uh, this is a shielded spade connector. Um, just a little male, female, but this has a shield around it, so it can't touch anything. So I'm just going to solder these on and solder some uh, heat shrink tubing around them. So... They'll never, never fail. So we'll put some heat shrink tubing around them. Nice permanent bond. Little heat shrink tubing around it. If this was outside, um, I would put some dielectric grease on this joint um, all the way around it to seal it. And then we'll just slide this over. We're in the center, in the center, and then you use a lighter. Make sure you got no sharp wires that are going to poke through and pierce the insulation, especially on the positive. The ground doesn't matter that much. And then you can use a lighter. Um, I don't want to go grab it, so use a cigarette lighter. Uh -huh. Get it? Cigarette lighter. But we can use the we can use the uh, soldering iron's heat to actually heat shrink it to it. Okay, it's all hooked up. The original. The new ones, out of sight, out of mind. Let's turn on the key and see if they work. Okay, let's plug in. What is this? This is the spotlight works. Spotlight works. Dash cam works. Uh, what else? Oh, I guess we can plug into the original one. Where'd this go? Let's plug into the uh, original one to make sure that works. Yep. Everything works. Well, there we go. Dash cam's going. Cell phone's charging. Uh, what? A, and I'm spotlighting people all at the same time. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, don't forget to do the thumbs up, like, share it on Facebook. Everybody needs more cigarette lighter plugs.